Hello everyone and welcome to my new video on factors of disordered eating, a longitudinal study of male athletes. Here is the full citation for the study that I'll be going over today and let's jump in. So first, a little bit of background on the study. This study is going to investigate the longitudinal influences of disordered eating, particularly the role of self-compassion and body satisfaction. And this is important because it's going to provide insight into how self-compassion and body satisfaction may play into disordered eating symptomology. From previous videos I have done, we know that disordered eating is a problem with athletes, both male and female. However, the authors point out that much of the research on potential risk factors for developing disordered eating has been cross-sectional in nature, and thus causal inferences cannot be drawn. One variable that may be a protective factor against disordered eating is body satisfaction. Research has shown that the more satisfied male athletes were with their bodies, the less they showed signs of disordered eating. A psychological variable that may influence body satisfaction is self-compassion. We've also touched on this a while back, but as a refresher, self-compassion is the extent to which one shows kindness and care towards the self, recognizes that all humans are imperfect, and is able to deal with one's thoughts in a mindful manner. Self-compassion has been shown to have a positive effect on body satisfaction and indirectly on disordered eating, but most research in this topic has only revealed results for females. Thus, this study aims to extend the research to see if self-compassion is also an effective tool for male athletes as it relates to disordered eating. Moving on to the current study, the most important part of this study's methodology is that it is longitudinal in nature. This allows us to see more causal effects, as opposed to the other studies previously mentioned that were just cross-sectional. There were two collection points for data in this study, time one around April to May, and time two around August to September. As this took place in 2020, athletes' training schedules were fairly similar at both time periods due to restrictions and cancellations of sport for the COVID-19 pandemic. Over 450 male athletes, most competing at the Division I level, filled out measures at both time points related to self-compassion, body satisfaction, and disordered eating. The researchers hypothesized that time one self-compassion would predict time two body satisfaction, time one body satisfaction would predict lower levels of time two disordered eating, and the indirect effect of time one self-compassion on time two disordered eating via body satisfaction would also be significant. So let's take a look at the results. Using structural equation modeling, the researchers modeled the relationship between time one and time two variables. There was no significant relationship between time one self-compassion and time two body satisfaction. Furthermore, the hypothesized indirect effect of self-compassion on disordered eating via body satisfaction was not supported. However, a direct effect of time one body satisfaction on time two disordered eating was found such that higher time one body satisfaction predicted lower time two disordered eating symptoms. So to wrap up, the researchers point out a few important findings from their study. One, the variability of self-compassion and body satisfaction over the two time periods differed. Self-compassion was relatively stable over the two time periods, whereas body satisfaction was a little bit more variable. This may indicate that body satisfaction can be changed and improved over time, which is a good sign for those struggling with body satisfaction issues. Next, the authors touch on the finding that self-compassion was not predictive of body satisfaction nor disordered eating, contrary to hypothesis. They again bring up studies that seem to indicate a relationship between self-compassion and these constructs, but only in women. This is surprising considering men generally have higher self-compassion than women. The authors suggest that self-compassion may impact men and women or other subgroups through different pathways, and more research should be done to investigate this. Moving on to the finding that body satisfaction predicted disordered eating, the longitudinal nature of this study revealed that body satisfaction may be more than just a correlate to disordered eating, it may be a risk factor. That is, Lower body satisfaction may increase the chances of developing disordered eating. While more diverse longitudinal samples are needed, this study seems to indicate this relationship. Finally, here are some of my thoughts on this article. 
First, I thought it was interesting how the researchers measured body satisfaction, taking into account things such as muscularity. In a previous video on body dissatisfaction, I, along with the authors of that study, mentioned how muscularity may play a bigger role for male body image than thinness or other body image constructs that are typically measured. So it was cool to see this study take muscularity into account. Finally, I keep running into structural equation modeling. I'm somewhat familiar with this data analysis technique as I looked into it when helping to write a book chapter last summer, but I still don't think I really understand the ins and outs of it. So I look forward to getting more insight into this technique in more advanced stats courses. Thank you all again for watching and I'll see you tomorrow in the next video.